Hello, world citizens. We are pleased you join us for today's International Month of Love and Peace webinar. I'm your host, Susan Wang Selfridge. Today, we will be focusing on religious freedom and human rights, the Taijiman case. Taijiman Qigong Academy is a place to practice Qigong, martial arts, and self-cultivation, and to share the love they have acquired with others. Dr. Hong Daozi, Ms. Hong, and the deeds of Taijiman have traveled the world promoting love and peace and connecting people through love and conscience. These global peace efforts create a stark contrast with how they have been treated in Taiwan, where they have been fighting injustice through the Taijiman case for 25 years. Today, we will learn more about this case and invite different Taijiman Dizi to share their experiences and their call for the Taiwanese government to correct the mistakes of this case and return Taijiman the justice it deserves. First, we would like to share with you a video on their recent endeavors in September. On the 20th anniversary of 9-11, Taijiman Qigong Academy and the Action Alliance to Redress 1219 arrived in New York City to spread a message of love and peace to the world. We started as a cultural goodwill group and we traveled around the world to spread the message of love and peace. In 2001, Tai Chi Men and its leader, Dr. Hong Daozi, were on a multi-city tour and were scheduled to conduct cultural exchange in New York City that included the ceremony of ringing the bell of world peace and love. Today we are back again in New York City to commemorate and to pay tribute to the victims and to honor the survivors of the attack on September 11th, 20 years ago. On this day in 2001, Taiji Men members were also in New York City when the two planes hit the World Trade Center. 20 years ago, we were here to attend the General Assembly at the United Nations. We stay on the 34th floor of one UN Plaza. We heard a plane flying very low. Then we witnessed the first plane crash into the World Trade Center. And around 9.04, and another plane crashed into it. So we knew that it was not an accident at all. More than 3,000 people were killed, and one of them was my classmate. The 9-11 attacks plunged the city into chaos. Yet Dr. Hong and Tai Chi Men did not leave New York City. The next day, on September 12, 2001, Dr. Hong and Tai Chi Men hosted a ceremony to ring the bell of world peace and love to pray for the victims, New York, the United States, and the world. Now, 20 years after 9-11, Taiji Men members also reflect on their own activism, which includes their ongoing pursuit of justice from Taiwan's government. The case started in 1996 by Prosecutor Ho, who was illegal indictment and falsified evidence against Taiji Men, and also illegal tax against Taiji Men. And in 2007, the Supreme Court of Taiwan even ruled that Taiji Men is not guilty of tax evasion. In 2010, the Ministry of Finance and the National Taxation Bureau promised to end the case within two months, which they did not do so. In August 2020, they even confiscated the land of Taiji Men against the tax levy. Taiji Men Qigong Academy and the Action Alliance to Redress 1219 also went to protest at TICO, the Taiwan Economic and Cultural Office in New York City, to send a message that their pursuit of justice, which started even before 9-11, is still continuing today. We are here today at the Taipei Economy and Culture Office in New York. We are calling upon President Tsai and the Taiwanese government to resolve the Taiji Men case. The case has been pending for more than 25 years. Now, just like 20 years ago, Taiji Men is on a multi-city tour to raise international awareness about their case, but also to promote a message of love and peace. So we're in New York, we've been to Hawaii, and then we are going to Teco in different places to let the people know that we have members from all over the world and we are all watching this case closely. We call upon the Taiwanese government and President Tsai to end our unjust Taiji Min case, return our sacred land, and to protect the freedom of culture and religion. Although Taiji Min has been fighting for justice for about a quarter century, they remain committed to their mission of spreading love, peace, and positivity throughout the world. Twenty years later, we wanted to give New Yorker moral support 
and hoping New York will be filled with love and peace and compassion. Taijiman's endeavors to promote love and peace around the world are recognized by leaders around the world. Taijima has chosen not to compromise on the case because it is a matter of principle. The amount of money and time they have spent on achieving the justice of this case has far surpassed the amount the Taxation Bureau demanded. We sincerely hope their efforts will bring justice to Taijiman, but also prevent anything similar from happening to anyone else in Taiwan or internationally. Now, we will welcome our first speaker of today's forum, Ms. Kelly Wu. Following her elder sister's footsteps, Ms. Wu joined Tai Chi Man in 12, 19, 2019 and experienced firsthand the amazing benefits of Tai Chi Man Qigong and learned wisdom to rebalance her life. Ms. Wu, the floor is yours. Hi everyone. Yes, I joined Tai Chi Man in 2019. My sister is also a Tai Chi Man Dizi and she once invited me to a Tai Chi Man event. As I walked in, brothers and sisters smiled at me. When I saw their smiles, I was wondering why their smiles were so bright and energetic. Besides their attractive smiles, I've also noticed the positive changes in my sister after she joined Tai Chi Man. I wondered what had changed her, so I joined Tai Chi Man out of my curiosity. Tai Chi Man is like a ship which drives us to a better place. Our conscience is the compass which leads our direction. Shifu is the captain who guides us when we should use the anchor and how to use the compass to find the right direction. Practicing Qigong with brothers and sisters every weekend is just like going to the gas station where I can get some fuel to move on for the following week. What I've learned in Tai Chi Man helps me calibrate my compass to make sure my behaviors and thoughts in my daily life are on the right track. Besides Qigong, which has improved my health a lot, a very important thing I've learned in Tai Chi Man is to think positively and view things in different aspects. Outside of Tai Chi Man, our conscience is still the only compass that people from different countries, ethnicities, ages, and genders use for directions. The laws in different countries are the maps which show us the general locations, but we still need the compass to point out the exact direction of where we should go. The governments are the ones who created the maps for their citizens to follow. Without obeying the laws, the world it will be chaotic. In fact, the abuse of taxation has become a weapon used by democratic governments to discriminate against religious and spiritual minorities. Many non-governmental organizations have begun to pay attention to the violation of human rights in a seemingly legitimate way. For example, Eric Bru, the chairman of the European Interreligious Forum for Religious Freedom, made incisive comments on the Tai Chi Man injustice. When a so-called democratic country starts to get off track, when injustice occurs in a place that is supposed to be one of the good places in the world, the impact may be worse than when it occurs in a totalitarian country because it lowers the democratic standards for the entire world. Tai Chi Man's unjust tax case is not only a tax case. It is a signal showing that our government is violating the laws it created. It is a signal showing that our government has deviated from the map it drew. And now is the time for everyone to help the government to calibrate its compass. I sincerely hope that the Taiwanese government can resolve the false Tai Chi Man case and revoke the illegal tax bill as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wu, for sharing your insightful mapping analogy and encouraging the people to help the government to obey the law and calibrate its moral compass. Next, let's welcome Ms. Sandy Lin. The three generations of Ms. Lin's family 
have greatly benefited from Taijiman Grandmaster Dr. Hong's teaching over the past two decades. And the Taijiman Los Angeles Academy has provided a safe and a nurturing environment, especially during the early years of her immigrating to the US. In July of 2021, Sandy participated at the International Religious Freedom Summit in Washington, DC, and shared the Taijiman case with the event organizers and participants. The reaction of learning the truth of the case and the way Taiwanese government handled the case, quite a shock wave. Without further ado, Ms. Lin, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. My name is Sandy, and it's my great honor to participate in today's forum. I am Tai Jiman Dizi of Los Angeles Academy. I have practiced Tai Jiman Qigong for almost 25 years. My parents, my siblings, and my two sons are also Tai Jiman Dizi. I moved to the United States with my family when I was 18. In the beginning of the years, life was not easy. However, we are grateful that my Shifu, Dr. Hong, established the Tai Chi Men Qigong Academy in Los Angeles, which became our second home. Under Shifu's guidance, my family and I practiced Qigong to improve our physical and mental health, and also learn the philosophy of yin and yang to overcome challenges in life. Especially when I became a mother, I can feel that practice Tai Chi Men Qigong has helped me a lot. I have more energy and become more patient and caring of taking care of my kids. Tai Chi Men Qigong Academy is also actively spreading positive energy in the community and around the world. We organize community events, host symposium on health and life wisdom, conduct cultural exchanges, and promote the International Day of Conscience and more. Our efforts to bring stability to the society I have followed my Shifu and Taiji Man brothers and sisters to participate in cultural exchanges around the world to share the culture of love, peace, and conscience. Every time the journey made me get better and understanding about myself and overcome my obstacles, I've become brave and confident in front of the people. Tai Chi Men Qigong Academy has visited 101 countries and conducted more than 3,000 performances. Tai Chi Men dedication to community service and promoting of love and peace and conscience has been praised and recognized by government officials in US and important leaders from all over the world. What we have done has made me feel so proud of being a Tai Chi Men Dizi. However, I can't believe such a promoter of love and peace group has been persecuted for nearly 25 years by the Taiwanese government. A few unscrupulous bureaucrats have used taxation as a weapon to persecute the freedom of religion or belief in Tai Chi Men. In 2007, the Supreme Court in Taiwan found the Tai Chi Men not guilty of fraud, tax evasion, or a violation of tax codes. What's even more annoying is that in August 2020, the rural government official auctioned off the sacred land of Tai Chi Men for self-cultivation. I remember when the incident just happened in 1996 in Taiwan. My Shifu, Tai Chi Men brothers and sisters, and my family got treated unfairly. The media was spreading false news, causing misunderstanding among our family and friends, and making us become victims of human rights 
persecution. It is hard to imagine that such an injustice will happen in a democratic country. Even more irritating is that a democratic country will allow an unlawful justice case to last for nearly a quarter of a century has not yet been resolved. This year, I participate in the 2021 International Religious Freedom Summit, IRF. As a volunteer of the Action Alliance to Redress 1219 and Tai Chi I want to speak out for the justice of Tai Chi Man. When I shared the Tai Chi Man unlawful case with participants at the IRF, many people were shocked to hear what Tai Chi Man has gone through. Everyone thinks that Taiwan is held up as a beacon of democracy in Asia. But when they heard about violation of religious freedom in Taiwan, they were very surprised that it has not been resolved for 25 years. At the IRF, Secretary of State Blinken stated in a speech that, quote, the U.S. is committed to advocacy, advanced human rights, and the religious freedom is a vital component of our democracy. I also believe that freedom of a religion is essential of a democratic country. I sincerely hope that the persecution against Tai Chi Minh can be stopped and the unjust case can be resolved so our sacred land for self-cultivation can be returned to us. Human rights and religious freedom will be protected and Taiwan can truly be on a path to democracy. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy, for voicing your concerns with us. With more conversations, we hope to give the Taiwanese government the push they need to do the right thing. Former U.S. Ambassador at Large for International Religious Freedom, Sam Brownback, co-chair of the IRF Summit 2021 stated, while different religious groups may practice their values in various ways, we believe government's role is to protect that innate right of a person to select their own course of future for their soul. Unfortunately, Tai Chi Minh rights have not been protected by the government. A lot has happened during the 25 year ordeal. What is the truth behind the Tai Chi Minh case? Let's take a look at the history of Tai Chi Minh case. The auction process has been legally concluded. of shadow in his eyes. Based on my instinct from years of handling cases, I think that he might have raised goblins. If based on the look in your eyes, a prosecutor can decide whether to prosecute you or not, then there will be no peace in Taiwan. I think these values should be honored in tax law as well. The first, second, and third trials all rule the nature of the money being questioned as gifts. Then it should not be a tax as tuition for a cram school. Because he thinks this is a respect for the master, it is a kind of gift, where the indictment is unacceptable. If the tax authority uses this indictment as the basis for taxation, I think it is questionable. Code 
doesn't count. The coat doesn't count. The coat doesn't count. We still want to emphasize that Tai Chi Men indeed is not a cram school. We would like to commend Tai Chi Men for its contribution to sports and family life education. So there is no issue of income tax for the facts confirmed in a criminal court ruling. The administrative agencies have no reason not to adopt them. You can go to the website of the Control Yuan to see that I have issued seven corrections. For each correction, the NTB said, Ah, we made a mistake. In 2011, I told the Minister of Finance that this case should be closed. He didn't take it as his own business. He thought, I took the bonus anyway, and if there is any tax due, it is you that should pay it. In the criminal and legislative aspects, Tai Chi Man has been declared innocent of all charges. Tai Chi Man has won the case. As for the National Taxation Bureau and the Executive Yuan system, our appeal has been heard in the Supreme Court. The final decision of the three court trials confirmed Tai Chi Man innocent. At the National Taxation Bureau, within the Ministry of Finance's appeal system, Tai Chi Man once again won the case. Even the control Yuan decided that Tai Chi Man is innocent. I can't think of any ways after numerous legislators have inquired regarding this case. I can't think of any other course of action in our country's legal system can be taken to solve the case. I really don't know what is going on. Is it how our country's legal system is designed? This case has been dragged for more than 10 years and is unable to be resolved. The administrative agencies have to take full responsibility while the administrative agencies exercise administrative discretion. They have to ensure that people's human rights on taxation are protected, which is the most important spirit and objective. Judicial system has proved Tai Chi Man innocent. There's no way the investigation by the tax agencies is clearer than that by the judicial department. I know this issue has wasted too much time and resource. This is very serious. It has shaken the five branches of government and the foundation of the nation. Calling on a taxation rule to revoke its illegal tax bills. You just ignore them. Hey, you think you're above us? You ignore the courts, the control yuan, and even the legislative yuan. You really think you're the boss? here and all the information and evidence is here it's spread out all over the floor and you clearly know that you are in the wrong what you've said in the past is questionable but you want to continue to make the same mistake that's bad we request that the Ministry of Finance conclude this case in two months exactly what to do and what are you going to do don't delay anymore gives the nature, sure. the others all say gifts too. Let the NTB of the Central Area submit the report to the Ministry of Finance. It's the NTB of the Central Area. It's not good to let them take full responsibilities. Just report to the Ministry. Okay, we'll do as the Deputy Minister says. We'll send our official report to the Ministry of Finance. Just now we said to revoke. Revoke it? Okay. Area will report to the Ministry of Finance. The bidding process is supposed to be open. 
I can't hear this song from the auction room. Copy number one to number one hundred fifty into the tinder box. Which one do you follow for the ten thirty action? Please answer, Li Guifan, senior executive officer. Which one do you follow? No, there is no mention of 10.30. You wrote 11, okay? We have internal then show them to me immediately. Okay, then you can show we me your website right here. away. How can it be? Why should government officials follow their conscience? He does not dare to show his moral courage and leave the people in the sun, wasting not only the resources of the people, but also the resources of the country. I think that government officials should be conscientious and should administer policies in accordance with the law and bring this case to an end as soon as possible. It is taxing illegally. This wrongful and false case has lasted for more than 20 years. If the 1992 tax bill of the Taiji Man wrongful and false case is not rectified, then we can say that there is tyranny in Taiwan. Thousands of people surround the auction site in Miaoli. Even if the iron gate was locked in front of them, the people still sat and waited to defend the land. The Taijiman case, in which over 10,000 people have been victimized, has lasted for 24 years. But the enforcement agency still wanted to auction the land of Taijiman to pay back a wrong tax bill when Taijiman was found not guilty of tax invasion by the court 13 years ago. If a person on death row cannot be executed when he is later found innocent, then why did the 1992 tax bill issued by the Supreme Administrative Court get executed? Officials from the Ministry of Justice also said, it was legal to carry out the enforcement. So is the Su Chan Ho case. It's legal. They could have executed the death penalty. Why didn't they execute it at the time? It's because there is a problem. Since it is a problematic judgment, the enforcement agency should not have executed it. So why did they execute it? Why? It's a question of bonuses. When the Tai Chi Men case was handled like this, will ordinary people encounter the same problem? Definitely. The administrative enforcement agency is not qualified. It is not objective and neutral. And it is not qualified to enforce the enforcement law. In order to frame people, it deceived the public and broke the law. The truth will finally be revealed. The state does not have the power to seize people's property and the administrative system should not persecute people and their family. The entire auction is completely illegal based on the Supreme Court's decision, the Supreme Administrative Court's decision, the investigation report of the Control Yuan, and the arguments put forward by various experts and scholars both at home and abroad. It is an unlawful judgment. But after the first unlawful auction, it is actually going on for the second time today. Now they are really going to execute it. And they have violated Article 129 of the criminal law for the crime of unlawful expropriation. We will file another lawsuit later.
Regarding the Tai Chi Men case, it was taxed from 1991 to 1996. It was strange. How could this happen? So, you see, a search was conducted on December 19, 1996. He said that there was tax evasion. The income tax in 1996 cannot be audited until April 1997. They had not yet filed their taxes, how could you investigate tax evasion? How do you know how they will file their tax return? Therefore, the tax years involved in the case clearly show that this violated the tax law. Those who study the law know that you cannot prosecute or convict a person without getting the cash flow data. During the search on December 19, 1996, two bank statements show the balance of $22,000. However, the next day, a newspaper published that the master of Tai Chi Men had $11 million income from fraudulent acts and cram school tuition. You can't make such an inference even when you are writing a novel. How did they come up with this number? $22,000 times 5,000 is exactly $110 million. Probably that was how they got the number. The so-called evidence obtained after the search can be proved to be false, because you already set the amount. The transcripts. The transcripts and testimony. When were they done? Definitely after December 20th. $22,000 was blown up to be $110 million. Then this is all imagined. If they can impose taxes on people without evidence, then do we still need tax agencies? You can collect whatever amount of tax you want if you find more prosecutors like him. It's that simple. It's very clear in the Tai G Men tax case that the tax officers and taxation bureau imposed illegal taxes. Whether the tax laws applied or the tax demand are not justified. Imposing taxes based on imaginary data is absolutely against the principle that taxes should be imposed according to the law. 
No other nations that implement income taxes have this kind of practice.
It is unbelievable how Prosecutor Ho Kuan Ren initiated the case. As he himself said, I saw a streak of shadow in his eyes. Based on my instinct from years of handling cases, I think that he might have raised goblins. It is not acceptable that an accusation as non-scientific as this and unprofessional as this has led to a 25 year human rights violation. It is grossly unacceptable that a just resolution has eluded Tai Chi men for so long. This is why many Tai Chi men have spoken up to support the rectification of this case. Next, we would like to invite Ms. Sarah Inc a former pharmacist and now is pursuing to become a Chinese medicine doctor. Joining Tai Chi Men has brought her health back and sound sleep at night. With her regained energy, she was able to expand the horizon of her life, promoting love, peace, and human rights at many influential institutions, including the United Nations. Like many US citizens, Ms. Ng's perplexed by how absurd the Tai Chi Men case is let alone to keep it perpetuated until this day. Let's welcome Ms. Sarah Inc. Hi everyone. Ever since I was young, I was very curious about Qigong. So when I found out that Tai Chi Men Qigong Academy was so close to my house, I took the opportunity to join, hoping to improve my health. Especially at that time, I was suffering from shoulder pain. I wasn't able to lift up my right arm for more than three months. Even after going to massage weekly, there's not much improvement. Surprisingly, after I practiced Qigong for one month, one day I was able to lift up my arm. I think Tai Chi Men Qigong Academy is a place that is full of positive energy. It makes people feel relaxed and calm. Brother and sister from Tai Chi Men treat each other like family, supporting and encouraging each other. After joining Tai Chi Men Qigong Academy, I learned how to breathe correctly. I also learned to think from different perspectives, let go of negative thought and balance my life through Sifu's guidance. After practicing Qigong, both my health and my sleep improve. Before practicing Qigong, I had vivid dream every night. I woke up remembering my dreams and felt like I didn't really sleep. After practicing Qigong for a while, I get upset. After I practicing Qigong for a while, this dream gradually disappear. Also, before practicing Qigong, I was very anxious. I get upset on very little thing. I remember that I would get upset just because of a piece of coupon. But now, even with bigger difficulty, I would be able to think from a different perspective and get upset for only a short time. Due to my anxiety, I used to plan a lot. I had to plan for everything to feel secure and planning ahead for a year or two. I was constantly thinking about what I need to do next and wasn't able to enjoy the present. Now I only plan for the next week and special events. I try to go with the flow and live in the moment. Especially with the pandemic, Many people were anxious because of the changes and unforeseen future, but I was able to go with the flow. After the pandemic, I continued working part-time. I also started studying for traditional Chinese medicine with three kids at home. It's been a year and a half. There's a lot of things that I need to make change to accommodate but by practicing Qigong, it's given me positive energy to keep moving forward. Over the years, Sifu had led brother and sister to different country to promote love and peace every year. Sifu led his DJ to promote conscious 
and its importance to world peace. He invited leaders all around the world to do positive deeds for the world. During the pandemic, Shifu also led his DG to promote the preventive measures for health and well being, the three don'ts and five do's. Don't lose your temper, don't worry, and don't be anxious. Wash hands frequently, drink more warm water, do more exercise, be happy, and be more careful. Teaching people around the world to prevent from getting sick and having a peace of mind. Three years ago, I had the opportunity to go to New York with Shifu for the first time. At the United Nations, I saw Shifu promote conscience to and ambassadors from various countries for world peace. And the subsequent cultural exchange events, they made me realize what Shifu did was very meaningful and important. Shifu not only taught us to be physically and mentally healthy, but also taught us to help those around us. On September 11 this year, I once again had the opportunity to join a memorable event to promote love and peace with my brother and sister, as well as my 12 years old son. This time we went to New York and Washington DC for two days to relive how Shifu and the brothers and sisters calmed the hearts of the people in New York 20 years ago. Tajiman is a, such a good place, but in the past 25 years, the human rights and freedom of belief have been violated by the Taiwanese government. Living in the United States, I can't understand why the prosecutor in Taiwan released false information without evidence. What's even more concerning and unreasonable is that the Supreme Court has found Tai Chi Man was not guilty and without tax evasion. However, the IRS in Taiwan still ignore the criminal court and continue to issue unlawful tax bill, illegally seize their property and confiscate it the sacred land for the cultivation center. As Hans North, president of Gerald North Foundation for Freedom of Religious or Belief, criticized the lack of accountability in the case. It sends the message to the public that the National Tax Office can get away with impurity, and it is above the law rather than a servant of the law and the people. The message is that religious freedom and freedom of expression is all relative in revenue service, has more power than the ordinary administrative agency should have, so that the victims cannot access to justice. This is a crisis in democratic country. I hope that Taiwanese government will vindicate the Tai Chi Minh case and make Taiwan a truly free, democratic and human right country. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for your heartwarming presentation. Our next speaker, Ms. Polly Han, will present a newly surfaced testimonial from a former Taiwan National Taxation Bureau tax collector, Shi Yue Shen, who reveals the dark truth on how Prosecutor Ho coerced him to levy tax on two Taiji men illegally. Ms. Hong, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, Twenty-four years ago, Taiwan's Ta National Taxation Bureau imposed taxes on Tai Chi men solely on the basis of a criminal indictment. The testimony of tax collector Yue Shen Shi was the main evidence presented by Prosecutor Ho Kuan Zhen to indict Tai Chi men. Tax collector Yue Shen Shi, who had never conducted any actual investigation of Tai Chi men, 
was summoned by Prosecutor Ho to commit perjury by falsely claiming that Tai Chi Man is a cram school that allegedly evaded taxes. This was actually made public on August 22nd, 2021, through a media outlet reporter interview. Mr. Shi revealed in this interview that Prosecutor Ho, who initiated the Tai Chi Man case, asked him to testify falsely against Tai Chi Man. Shi stated that no matter what he said, Prosecutor Ho would simply claim that she determined Tai Chi Man was evading taxes. She went on to say that when he was asked about the case at the time, he would express his reservations about issuing the tax bills to Tai Chi Man, but no one would listen to him. Taxation, in his opinion, should be supported by evidence. And in the Tai Chi Man case, no clear explanation or evidence for the calculation of the taxes was provided. Since Ho's indictment in 1997, the NTB has relied solely on the indictment to justify its tax demands. But an indictment is not a court judgment. This practice of NTB's use of the indictment as evidence is flawed, and it also demonstrates the phenomenon of insufficient judicial implementation of legal requirements. This interview confirmed that the prosecutor made up the tax evasion charges against Tai Chi Man and that the tax bills were issued that was illegal. Furthermore, the Taiwanese Supreme Court has since ruled that Tai Chi Man was not guilty of all charges and did not owe taxes. In the Tai Chi Man case, the control Yuan also took the initiative to investigate and conclude that Prosecutor Ho Kuan Jin committed eight major violations of the law, and the National Taxation Bureau committed seven violations of the law. The National Taxation Bureau admitted making mistakes in each of the seven corrections issued by the control Yuan, proving that the tax bills were illegal and should be revoked immediately. We request that the Taiwanese government immediately end this case of injustice and return the sacred land to Tai Chi Man, restore the people's right to justice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Han, for presenting the late tax collector's expose on what exactly happened at the initial stage of the case. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. put it so eloquently, there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe nor politic nor popular, but he must take it because conscience tells him it is right to do. Mr. Shi finally took the courage to do what's right nearly 25 years later. Our next speaker, Dr. Nguyen Nguyen Tung, has been serving at the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles as an MRI specialist and is a Tai Chi Man Dizi for more than two decades. As a devoted Buddhist, she follows the rule of cause and effect and embraced Dr. Hong's axioms in conscience. In her presentation, she demands the Taiwanese government to address their unjust treatment to the people. Let's welcome Nguyen Nguyen. Hello, my name is Nene Tong. I am from Myanmar. I currently work in Children's Hospital as a MRI technologist. I am a Tai Chi Medici and a practice in Qigong already 25 years. I am a Buddhist since I believe karma, fate, philosophy of cause and effect. I want to be a happy and a good person. I want to cultivate my lifestyle. That's the reason why I decided to join Tai Chi Man in, in 1996. I have been touched by Tai Chi Man Sifu's life cultivation philosophy that I use in my daily life. Mindfulness and a calm in stressful situation, try to simplify my lifestyle, speak nice words, and communicate with empathy, brave, nice, and smooth. I love life wisdom from my sifu. I feel grateful to my sifu and the Tai Chi Man. According to Joy, after joining Tai Chi Man for three months, I heard about Tai Chi Man sifu and some Tai Chi Man Dizi got unlawfully detained. He was wrongly accused by the prosecutor for fraud and tax evasion. I was shocked. How come the anti-democratic incident happened in Taiwan? Taiwan National Testation Bureau based the test of 1991 to 1996 based on the false indictment. Over the years, 
Taiji, my brothers and sisters, fight for that. In 2007, the Supreme Court found Taiji Man was not guilty and without any tax evasion. However, the NTB state issued the unlawful test bill based on the ab abandonment indictment. It is a violation of human right. In 2009, the NTB carried the test bill for five years to zero. 1991, 1993 to 1996. Regrettably, that 1992 test bay remained in the both day now. The administrator disregarded all evidence favor to Tai Chi Man and denied the monetary gift but attribution. Worsely, they confisc confiscated Tai Chi Man's property. Unbelievable, it has been almost 25 years. It should be end now. It should stay remain. The authorities are still violating human rights and abusing the power. Tai Chi Man promote healthy, happy and simple lifestyle. Tai Chi Man goals and composed love and peace on, not only for individual, one group or one family, but also around the world. Taiwan is a democratic country. How come that the government has violated the principle of equality and a rule of law? It is bad example that government officials violate human rights and the freedom of religion or belief. According to the fact, the five-year unlawful test base has been corrected to zero. How come the 1992 test base based on the some fact but not being corrected? How come the government can unlawfully confiscate people's properties? Shouldn't be. It has been undemocratic in the democratic country. It's still happening in Rio abuses tax collection. Evil and greedy mind are in authority. I believe Tai Chi Man is not the only victim under this priority system. Many victims and unlawful cases are happening now. The tax authority applies abuses illegal tax collection in Taiwan and civil rights by collecting false data collecting test base and awarding bonuses. This kind of testation system should be changed now. I truly hope the Taiwanese government could end the Tai Chi Man unlawful case. Only by doing so, Taiwan could transform into a democratic country. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Nye, for your heartwarming and truthful presentation. As the greatest Shakyamuni Buddha said, three things cannot be long hidden, the sun, the moon, and the truth. We urge Taiwanese government to end the Taijiman case now. It's time for us to welcome our final speaker for today's forum, Ms. Cici Han, a talented Harvard University graduate architect Practicing Qigong at Tai Chi Men not only cures Ms. Han's eczema from her childhood, but also brought her an enduring, useful complexion. Most importantly, she learned from Shifu Dr. Han to always reflect upon herself and live by the highest law, our innate conscience. She will express the serious repercussions of Taiwanese government turning their back on the people for power and bonus money and taking people's money and property through illegal taxation. Ms. Cici Han, the floor is yours. Hi everyone, I'm Cici. Um, I'm very honored to be here today to be part of this discussion um, and to express myself. I am an architectural designer and a mother of two. I'm also a Tai Chi Man Dizi. I started to practice Qigong at age of 13. My mother introduced me to Tai Chi Man because she thought Qigong would help my severe allergy 
and atopic dermatitis, and it did. But what I have learned the most, the most valuable thing from Tai Chi Men, from my Shi Fu, is the way to treat people and the way to treat myself. No matter how people look at us, at the end of the day, it is a conscience that we must face. My Shi Fu taught us that because, because life is full of ups and downs, so we need to always find a balance in order to keep up with our life. He taught us ways and wisdoms to find a balance physically and mentally. What I learned from Tai Chi Men allowed me to find my balance when hard time strikes. So I'm able to stay calm and grateful when life is challenging. The energy field are all shared and connected. So our own good is not enough. We need to constantly spread positive energies to the world to counterbalance the negative force. Practicing Qigong to gain back health is the first part. Soon we realize that physical health is deeply connected with the state of mind. Our mental health is equally important, if not more. Our Shi Fu taught us yin and yang philosophy to help us differentiate right from wrong, good from evil, like a moral compass in heart. My Shi Fu also took us to visit country to country to spread the message of love, peace, and conscience. Conscience is a concept everyone knows, but hardly choose to follow. My Shi Fu taught me if I don't know how to react to a situation, then act according to my conscience. If I have made a mistake, of course, I will worry about how people will get angry and how I will be blamed like everybody else. And it's normal that people tend to find excuses or try to hide their mistakes, but it is not the right way or the sustainable way. I should just admit the truth and own my mistake and take responsibility so my heart is free of guilt so I can move on with my life. But the Tai Chi Man case is a result of a group of people not owning their mistakes. From beginning to the end, it is a fabricated case by a series of rogue government officials, prosecutors, tax officers. Some initiated the mistakes out of greed or pride. Some became their accomplices out of fear or even more greed. After all, they all refused to admit their mistakes and continue to cover for each other. So together, they allow this mistake to develop for over 24 years. And last year, the enforcement agency seized Tai Chi Man's property, turning our future self-cultivation center to a piece of national land, the biggest mistake they ever made. Taiwan claimed to be a democracy with freedom and human rights. However, the government allows rogue officials abusing their state power, causing people pain and miseries for their own interests. It is clear that this situation happens in Taiwan. You know, we have the control Yuan established in the first place to prevent this from happening. But somehow this system is lack of power, lack of reinforcement. We don't have the correct system to check and balance our government, to keep our government from abusing their power. It is something that our Taiwanese government needs to work on for the sake of Taiwanese citizens. Think about this. If there is no consequences followed when the officer with power made a mistake. It is only a matter of time before our government starts abusing their power for their own interests and the future of Taiwan will be questionable. We all make mistakes. It is okay to make mistakes and then own the mistakes. 
it's actually admirable because you will have to have the courage to stem the criticism. To admit the mistake is the first step. Be accountable for any liability is the way to redeem yourself. People who learn from their mistakes turn into a better person. And we need our society full of this type of people, the honest people. And we need our country to be run by these people so the future of Taiwan is bright and promising. As a Tai Chi man Dizi, I sincerely hope that these officials could come up and own their mistakes, return our land, restress Tai Chi man case, and be responsible and accountable for the pain and damages they have caused for over 25 years. As a Taiwanese citizen, I hope the government especially President Tsai, to have the courage and wisdom to do the right thing. It's been 25 years, and I know it was not during your turn when it started, but it is your chance to make it right, to help Taiwan restore its name of a democratic country with freedom and human rights, and to establish and implement a concrete rule of law system as a guideline for everyone to follow. When everyone follows the rule of order, follows their conscience, Taiwan will become a true democracy with freedom and justice as a role model for other countries to follow. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Han, for your powerful presentation. I'm sure we all want a better future for our upbringings to do so we must de demand the governmental officials to set a good example for the people to follow. During the IRF summit, Dr. Katrina Lento Sweat, president of the Lentos Foundation for Human Rights and Justice and co-chair of the IRF summit 2021, emphasized the importance of conscience, saying that if people can always keep themselves attuned to hear their conscience, it will whisper to them the difference between right and wrong, despite the temptations and ugliness in the world. The concept of conscience mentioned by Dr. Sweat is very relevant to the Tai Chi Men case. The case can be rectified if the leaders are willing to correct the mistakes made by the few bureaucrats. This will truly advance Taiwan in the field of human rights protection. Dale Carnegie once said, most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. We truly hope the 25 year ordeal of human rights violation in the Tai Chi Men case will be resolved soon. So no one else suffers from this unjust and Tai Chi Men would be able to spend more time promoting love, peace at home and globally for the betterment of the world. Thank you once again for joining us today. Let us continue our venture to protect human rights and the freedom of religion, belief, and culture. Thank you. <laughs>